Yo, it's Elad. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're doing part four of the finer details of Branded. Uh, today we're talking about tech cards, uh, primarily for if you get ashed on the Branded Fusion um, and what to do after that. Um, so the three main cards that people will play for this reason are Crosshaw Designator, Nadir Servant, and Triple Tactics Thrust. Uh, something to note is that throughout time, I have also seen every combination using two out of these three tech cards. Uh, you don't necessarily just have to play one. Um, I have seen cross out with Nadir, I've seen Nadir with Thrust, and I've seen cross out with Thrust. I haven't seen anybody as of yet use all three, uh, probably because you would either be getting into some really weird ratios or you would just have a lot of bricky hands. Um, so uh, I don't know about all that. Um, but we're gonna talk pros and cons. We're gonna talk about basic applications. We're gonna talk about which one or ones you should play in your build of Branded Despia. Uh, because, you know, we're going we're gonna to get a little philosophical, but sometimes, depending on what other things you play, I do think certain options here are better than others. Um, so we'll get into all of that. Uh, first, we're going to talk about Crossout Designator because it is the most simple one. Um, so there's a meme about Branded. Perhaps you've heard it. Um, and it's that the deck dies to Ash Blossom. And that's only like half true, uh, to be honest. That's only like half true because Branded loses a lot harder to other things, usually post side deck. Things like Anti-Spell, things like Eradicator, Epidemic Virus when they call Spell, um, or things like D-Barrier. Those things are way worse than an Ash Blossom, generally speaking. But the reason Ash Blossom is the meme is because consistently Ash Blossom is a problem. Consistently, Ash Blossom is annoying. Pretty much everyone and their mother main decks Ash Blossom. It's something that you have to think about. And compared to most other hand traps, it is by far the most impactful against Branded. Uh, most Branded builds don't give a shit about Droll, like ever. And if you're, if you're struggling into Droll, I would either look into how you build the deck or how you play the deck, um, because that's a really easy problem to solve. Uh, Nibiru can be annoying, but it is by no means just like, you know, an insta win. Um, there are still things you can do through Nibiru. Uh, Shifter is pretty annoying. I, I will give you that. Shifter is pretty annoying. Um, and even stuff like Bell is like Ghost Bell can have some interesting applications against Branded, but none of them compare to Ash Blossom and to a lesser extent, Imperm as well. Uh, so typically people will play Cross Out with ash in the main deck because ash is ash but also this is like the biggest problem card consistently the biggest problem card um and they'll play imperm as a secondary target if ash doesn't come up but maybe imperm you know is is annoying or is hitting a choke point in the deck that we would like to avoid um and cross out just kind of does what it says on the box it's a one trick pony if you get ashed on the branded fusion and you have cross out in hand you can play it you can banish a copy of Ash Blossom from your deck, negate the Ash, and your Branded Fusion goes through like normal. Um, and like I said, if Imperm comes up, then you can cross out the Imperm instead, assuming they don't have Ash, but it is less important because um, we can play around Imperm with things like Cartesia anyways. So a lot of times that's not too big of a deal. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, going first, cross out is great. Um, you know, if you draw it and you get to cross out an ash and just build your board uninterrupted after that, that's pretty nice. Um, going second, cross out is still okay um, because, you know, you can cross out the ash blossom. Um, and if a player who went first and built a board before you has ash, it is still generally better to ash the branded fusion rather than to negate branded fusion with a monster, uh, usually because. Take Barone to Flora just as a generic example. Barone negates the activation of a card or an effect. If you negate the activation of Branded Fusion, then we can recycle it in the graveyard with Retribution, add it back to hand, and just play it again. So if they have Ash, they will Ash, generally speaking. Um, and Branded Lost also prevents the negating the activation, um, but Ash will still kill Branded Fusion through Branded Lost. Um, so if you get ashed and you cross out the ash and they still just have a monster effect to negate the cross out then you know That's kind of an L um, It just kind of is what it is um, But it's it's still 
solid going second. Um, I find it really funny when I see a lot of other decks, um, normally like in the in the rogue category, that will play crossout, and in the main deck they will have like four different crossout targets. They'll play like one nib, one ash, one droll, one valor, all for crossout, uh, which to me is really silly because if you're losing that hard to that many hand traps, the deck is probably just terrible anyway. So like, I don't think crossout is really gonna help you all that much. But Branded, as I said, no out, no hand trap is nearly as impactful as Ash. So if we know what the problem is, the consistent problem card is, and we just have a generic negate for it, usually that's pretty good. Uh, so that's that's the thinking behind crossout. That is that is why people play it. Um, and that just kind of is what it is. Um, so second up, we will talk about Nadir Servant. I get questions a lot, uh, actually, in the comments about, oh, have you thought about playing Nadir Servant? Why don't you play Nadir Servant? You never really talk about it all that much. Um, I talked about it in a video like months ago, um, cause I was, I was talking about Crossout versus Nadir and why I preferred Crossout over Nadir. And I still, I still am of that opinion. I'll get into like what I prefer out of these three uh, a little later. Um, but Nadir Servant is a different sort of thinking um, in terms of what do we do after getting ashed on Branded Fusion. Um, Nadir Servant is a setup card after the fact uh, using your engine, which is very interesting. Um, the problem with Nadir Servant is that once you play Nadir Servant, you are locked out of the extra deck, so it is purely set up for your opponent's turn. Um, and what you do with Nadir Servant is, when you activate it, you send a monster from your extra deck to the grave, then add a Dogmatica or a Fallen of Albaz from your deck or grave to your hand that has attack less than or equal to whatever extra deck monster you sent, um, and then you are locked out of the extra deck. So, the reason I feel like you should play this card, especially is if you are also playing the gimmick Puppet Nightmare. I mentioned this card... Uh, sometimes uh, I really hate it. Uh, I played it for a very, very short period, um, and I resolved it like two times, and I went, man, this is really boring. This is really boring. Like, I could just do the same thing. I could get the same experience by just doing a test hand at home. Why am I even playing this fucking game? So I don't play it, and I also don't like that if you get interrupted setting up a gimmick puppet board your board then also just looks really stupid. Um, so I don't like this card. I think if you are playing this card, this is one of the best, if not the best tech cards in this video um, that you can include in your deck. Um, and if you build a certain way, uh, Nadir Servant can just be a one card combo for a gimmick puppet nightmare lock on your opponent's turn. There are different iterations of Nadir Servant. You don't have to build it in the exact way that I'm about to show you but this is just the, the sort of main example of it. So if you haven't seen it before, I'll go over it very quickly. Um, it's likely that you have though. A lot of people have talked about the gimmick puppet. So let's say you got ashed on your branded fusion. You have Nadir Servant. This will gimmick puppet lock your opponent on their turn. Nadir Servant. First, we have to send an extra deck monster to the graveyard and we add a Dogmatica or an Albaz from deck to hand. So. The one card gimmick puppet lock is Nadir Servant send Tri Brigade Arms Bucephalus 2 or the second or whatever the fuck his name is, and you add Dogmatica Maximus to your hand. So the reason we sent Bucephalus is because when he hits the grave, we can send Brigrand the Glory Dragon to the graveyard. Okay, now in order to summon Dogmatica Maximus, we have to banish an extra deck monster from the graveyard. We want our Albaz fusion to stay in the grave, so we banish the Bucephalus to special Maximus. Maximus then has an ignition effect that we can activate here to send two more extra deck monsters to the graveyard. And our opponent has to do the same. So you have to also keep in mind, depending on what deck you're playing against, this can potentially backfire. Uh, just a small added note there. So. Here, we're going to send two extra deck monsters to the grave, which is going to be Albion the Branded Dragon and Despian Lulu Walilith. And then we can just kind of go to the end phase if we had nothing else. Uh, so, on the end phase, Lulu can special summon a Cartesia or a Quem from the deck. And we are going to special summon our Cartesia. Albion the Branded Dragon 
can set to the field or add to the hand a branded spell or trap. We will be setting to the field our branded in red. And then Brigrin, the glory dragon, just in case, you know, you never play with this guy because most people don't play him anymore. Um, on the end phase, if he was sent to the graveyard, you can add to hand or special summon a tri brigade monster or a fallen of Albaz. So you could add a Mercurier here, uh, but for the one card gimmick puppet lock, you're going to add to hand or special your fallen of Albaz. Okay, and then we just pass to our opponent's uh, turn. So what happens here? We have to wait till the main phase for Cartesia because we need to do Cartesia first here. Um, and as soon as we are able to, we will Cartesia fuse using herself and Albaz to go into Grand Guignol. Grand Guignol on summon will send to the graveyard the gimmick puppet Nightmare. And then at the next opportunity, we will brand it in red, target the Albaz in the graveyard, add to hand, and then we can fusion here by banishing materials. We will banish Albaz, and you need a light spellcaster, so it could be either one of these, but you may as well just use the Maximus. Banish these two to make the Sanctifier, and then on res of that chain, you can Sanctifier and target the Gimmick Puppet and Cartesia. Gimmick Puppet will obviously go to your opponent's side of the field and they will not be able to special summon monsters for the rest of the turn. Okay, so that is the one card Gimmick Puppet Nightmare Lock, just in case you haven't seen it before. Um, just a really quick example. You don't have to build the Nadir Servant version in this exact way, as I said before. You don't have to run Bucephalus, and you don't have to run uh, Brigrand, the Glory Dragon, uh, if you don't want to. Um, you might need a second card to set up the Gimmick Puppet Nightmare if you're not playing these. And I totally understand not playing these because this is pretty expensive on the extra deck space. Uh, so you might not have room for other things that you like. So keep that in mind as well. Um, so yeah. Like I said, you don't have to build it that exact way. Uh, another version of this that I've seen is you Nadir Servant. And the main thing that changes is instead of sending to the graveyard the Bucephalus, you just send Garura, um, and then you'll add Maximus to hand. That way, when Garura hits the graveyard, you can just draw a free card. It can be literally anything. Um, and then you can do the, the same Maximus play, and maybe you send Albion and Lulu, maybe you send Albion and Titanoclad, uh, etc., etc., kind of whatever you like. Uh, there are definitely different ways to build with Nadir Servant, which, to its credit, makes it very interesting. Um, but the, the reason I don't play Nadir Servant is one, because I don't play the gimmick puppet. As I said, I just, I don't like the card. I don't think it's the superior version of branded necessarily. Um, and I also don't like that, you know, it does lock you out of the extra deck and it can be potentially a pretty fragile board, um, going into your opponent's turn and going second, especially, this is the thing I hate most about Nadir Servant going second. This card is so terrible. It is so terrible. You're telling me going second, you're going to lock yourself out of the extra deck and go for minimal setup and then just, just pass it back to your opponent with their full board. Ain't no way, bro. Ain't no way. Um, and a lot of times the weird thing for me is I see a lot of people that, that play Nadir Servant and when they know they're going second, they'll just side it out. And you can do that. But again, my personal opinion, you know, take it for what it's worth. I don't even, I don't like that because if you're signing it out going second, then you're still stuck with all of this extra stuff in the extra deck that you had to build around Nadir Servant. Um, and again, you don't have to build it in any one particular way. You could be playing Garura instead because you're also playing Super Poly, whatever. But I just, I don't like that. I don't want to play a card that I will so consistently side out uh, if I'm going second. Um, so. I don't like this card. I actually also think, just as a side note, I think Branded in High Spirits is super slept on um, because that card is one, searchable in engine. This is not searchable in engine. And also, High Spirits doesn't lock you out of the extra deck, but it has very similar applications. You can still send things to the grave, like your Albion, and you know search a different monster that mentions Fallen of Albaz and get your play started, or to set up things after the fact. Now, uh, real quick, before we go to Thrust, comparing these two. In short, they're both good going first as responses for Ash or playing after Ash. Um, 
I think they're both mid to bad going second. I think Crossout is a little bit better going second. I think Nadir Servant is just complete garbage going second. Just my personal opinion. Um, but I don't know. They, they both have their different pros and cons. I do think if you're playing the gimmick puppet Nightmare, I, I think Nadir Servant is worth it. Um, I just think that it just makes sense. Um, and, and another thing I know people will say in the comments is that you know, well, what if you, you draw like a bad hand and you have one of these two in your hand? Which one would you rather see? Would you rather see Crossout Designator or Nadir Servant? Nadir Servant at least gets you to your engine where Crossout does not. And that's fair too. Um, but the flip side of that, that you have to think about for yourself, again, your own philosophy of building the deck is, when would I rather resolve my place? Would I rather just resolve Branded Fusion on my turn with Crossout? Or would I rather just always have engine? Um, and that's that's something you have to decide for yourself. I don't think there's like a, a true objective truth to any of this, um, which again, makes this also very interesting. Um, but I'm also just keep in mind, I'm just giving my personal opinions about these cards. And if you were wondering uh, on another video why I don't play Nadir Servant, maybe this gave you a little bit of a glimpse into how my mind works. Okay, so the last one here is going to be Triple Tactics Thrust. So, if your opponent activates a monster effect during any phase, you can activate Thrust, and you can search for a normal spell or trap. If your opponent does not control a monster, you must set it to the field, and it cannot be activated this turn. And if your opponent does control a monster, you can add it to your hand instead. Okay. So what are we doing with this card exactly? Um, the typical main deck targets for Thrust in Branded are Triple Tactics Talent and Fusion Duplication. If you are going first and you get ashed on a Branded Fusion, normally Thrust will search and set to the field Fusion Duplication. You can't add it to hand if they don't control a monster. And if you're going first, that's not super likely. So you can set the Duplication. Why do we set the duplication? Duplication can target a fusion or polymerization, normal or quick play spell in your graveyard. Banish it and copy its effect. So that means you can just target the branded fusion in your graveyard after you've been ashed, banish it on your opponent's turn, and just branded fuse. It's a branded fusion later. Uh, it's like cross out, but later. Um, and then if you're going second, likely your opponent will control a monster so you will instead search talent um, because you can add it to your hand and then you can use talents for the draw to the take control of a monster or the rip from hand, whichever one would help you the most. Um, but the thing about thrust that I find very interesting is that it's kind of a mix of both cross out and Nadir servant in my mind, because it is saying to your opponent, I will resolve branded fusion by cross out designator. I will resolve the card. I don't care if you ask me, I will resolve Brand of Fusion. But it also can very easily get you to your engine like with Nadir Servant, um, which is really interesting to me as well. Um, so if you're going second especially and your opponent controls a monster, which is very likely, then you can add a normal spell or trap to your hand off of Thrust, which can be the Brand of Fusion. If you just got interrupted very early and you want to add the branded fusion, you can do that. Um, and if they weren't expecting that, that can be pretty huge. You can also search things like the fusion deployment. Maybe you go for a Cartesia or maybe you go for an Albaz fusion or whatever. And post side deck especially, there are so many other things that you can search for with Thrust. And the reason I like Thrust so much is this versatility. You can search things like Soul Release, which I think will be really big going against a lot of these fire decks uh, in the coming format after Phantom Nightmare. I think that'll be kind of huge. You can search things like the Herald of the Abyss, the Dark Roller, Lightning Storm, Feather Duster, potentially evenly matched, or if you're going first or something, you can set things like D Barrier or Eradicator or whatever. Um, the only note, the only quick note here about evenly matched is if you're playing evenly matched in your side deck for branded, I feel like you should just play it at three. Um, because if you're really afraid of like a deck that is running anti-spell, thrust probably won't get you to the evenly matched anyway. You might just really want to hard draw it. Um, but it is something that, you know, you can search, um, which is really cool. You can search these board breakers 
um, or some other fun tech cards or whatever. Um, and that's really cool. So Thrust is an offshoot of the Crossout Designator philosophy, but it can also just get you to your engine or whatever you want. Um, Cause these are two of the best spells in the deck, quite frankly. Um, and the cool thing about Fusion Duplication as well is that if you are running Super Poly, um, and of course you probably will be running Fusion Deployment, Fusion Duplication doesn't have to just target Branded Fusion in the grave. Maybe you didn't even get that far, but you can Super Poly or Fusion Deploy on your opponent's turn with Duplication. That could be a free Albaz Fusion when they don't expect it randomly, or just a free Super Poly if Super Poly is in your graveyard. So. The reason I like Thrust so much is there's there's a lot more options at any one time, there's a lot more versatility, and very rarely does this feel like a one-trick pony brick. Um, Crossout, I think, can sometimes feel like a one-trick pony brick. Um, even though, you know, negating Ash and resolving Branded Fusion is quite nice, that is all that it will ever do. Um, and Thrust will resolve your Branded Fusion at some point, or it can do any of these other things, which is really cool. Um, I've also gotten the question, and I'll just talk about it real fast here, about, okay, well, what about Thrust and Nadir Servant? Why would you play Thrust and Nadir Servant? Um, so, I think there's some merit to this, I will say, uh, because if your opponent controls a monster and you Thrust, you can search Nadir Servant if you would like um, and add it to your hand. However, if you're going first and you get ashed on your branded fusion or whatever, you can set Nadir Servant with Thrust, uh, but you can't add it to your hand if they don't control a monster. Um, so that does not really make Nadir Servant searchable. Um, in that instance, you'll still just want to set the duplication if possible. Um, and going second, as I said, I think Nadir Servant is horribly mid going second, horribly, horribly mid. Um, but. The reason you would play both is simply to hard draw Nadir Servant and have Thrust for the Duplication or the Talents or potentially any other Board Breaker or Brand Infusion or whatever. Um, so maybe you like both and that's fine too. Maybe you want to resolve Brand Infusion on your opponent's turn, but you also just like having the extra setup with N Nadir Servant. I'm, I'm like fumbling my words here. Nadir Servant. Um, and that's cool if you really like that. And again, if you're playing the Gimmick Puppet, I think both of these things can go pretty hard. I'm not gonna lie. I think that can go pretty hard. Um, one thing that I have not seen as often, but I have seen it. Uh, I think the first time I actually saw it was on uh, Phantom's channel. Um, go check him out. Uh, he has some great videos, by the way. Um, but he was playing Thrust and Crossout. And I, I was like, wow, I did not expect that actually. Um, because these both, in a in a simple sense, do the same thing. It's just saying, I will resolve Branded Fusion. I'm not going to build my board in a sort of roundabout way, like with Nadir Servant. I'm just going to resolve Branded Fusion, whether you like it or not. Um, and I, I, I find that very interesting, um, because in, in a way, like, which one would you rather have? I think going first, it doesn't super matter which one you see, um, because... You know, it's nice to just resolve Brand Fusion on your turn. That is ideal. You get to do a lot more, you know, outside of just that one play with Crossout. But Thrust is also just a crazy card in general. You can search so many things. And going second, it's much better than Crossout or Nadir for that matter. Um, so if you like the versatility of Thrust, but also sometimes you just want to resolve Brand Fusion on your turn, I think it's also valid to play this combination. Um, if you're playing Crossout and Nadir, why would you do this? Uh, I think you would do this, to be quite honest, if you can't afford Thrust, which is completely understandable. Thrust just got a reprint, that's what this is from. Uh, my playset of Thrust was brought to you by my Lucky Bonfire pool. Uh, I got very lucky, so that is what it is. But if you can't afford Thrust, thrust and you want to play both of these, I think there's some merit to that. Uh, like I said before, it's the, the added value of I will resolve my Brand Infusion, but I have some extra stuff too. Um, and getting into extra engine and all that sort of stuff. More extra deck monster grave effects, that sort of stuff. Um, I do think this is the weakest combination um, of like using two out of these three cards. Um, if you can afford Thrust or you own Thrust, I truly do think Thrust is the best. And I think if you're playing... The gimmick puppet 
then maybe you go thrust and nadir maybe you go uh thrust and cross out or whatever uh, that's kind of up to you again it's all philosophy from this point onward um and that's that's probably where i want to end the video here is talking philosophy because as i said there is no one way to build branded there is no one solved deck list that just everybody and their mother plays um and you i think i think you should give all three of these a try purely to find out more about yourself uh to find out okay well maybe maybe you really like the gimmick puppet maybe you like playing the gimmick puppet and you know what man maybe because of that you really like Nadir Servant, and you don't mind the extra deck space that that requires. And maybe you also like Thrust, maybe you like searching other board breakers or whatever. Maybe you play Cross Out because you can't afford Thrust, and you just want to resolve your branded fusion, and you're also not playing the puppet. So there's, there's always something to learn by playing each one of these, at least for a little while. Like, try each one out for a week, and then you can try combos if you'd like, you know, combinations of two of these, and just see what you like, because in the context of however you choose to build the deck, I think these tend to have different pros and cons. Um, but if you want my, my very short personal opinion, if you can afford Thrust, I think you should play Thrust. I'm just gonna keep it real. I think Thrust is, is really, really fucking good. This card is great going first and is possibly even better going second, because uh, you can add the card to hand. That can be pretty insane. Uh, I just, I love Thrust so much. If you cannot afford Thrust and you're not playing the gimmick puppet, I would recommend Cross Out. I really would. Um, I think I think if you're not playing the puppet, then I think you just want to resolve Brand of Fusion on your turn, man. I'm going to keep it real. I just think that's going to be better. Um, if you are playing the puppet and you only want to play one of these cards, I think you should play the Nadir Servant. I just think it, it gives you more. It doesn't have to be the puppet lock, but I think that is its most impactful application uh, for the most part. Again, there are a million different ways to build this deck. I cannot say that enough. Uh, but those are those are the, sh the short recommendations that I would make, um, depending on what you're playing. Um, so if you have any other additional questions, feel free to leave a comment and ask it. I'd be happy to attempt to help you out um, you know, adding on to whatever I said here already. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Um, and yeah, I just I just want to encourage that you should build branded the way that you like. I think you should play cards that bring you joy and that are effective. Because, uh, you know, there's an objective truth to a lot of things. But I don't know, man. Sometimes there is no objective one correct way to do something. I think it matters much more about the context in which you build the rest of the deck that will naturally, based on your own personality or the way you play or the cards you like, will lead you to one or two of these options over the other ones. So I think that's it. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you around. Take care. Peace out.